So depending on when you're watching this, we're either a couple days away or you're just installing 18.1 on your brand new iPhone. And this is going to be the Apple intelligence update for your iPhone, your iPad, your Mac, and everything in between. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys some of my absolute favorite features that you guys need to take advantage of with 18.1 because they are great and there's some quality of life updates that everybody should know about. Let's get into it. Now again, before we get started, in terms of iPhones that we'll be supporting Apple Intelligence, you need to be on an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max or newer, so that includes all the iPhone 16 lineup, and like I mentioned, those 15 Pros and 15 Pro Maxes. On the iPad side, you then need to have an M-powered iPad or newer, or the A17 iPad mini that just released, and then finally, any Mac with an M-series chip will be able to support Apple Intelligence. So now that we have that out of the way, all these updates will be Apple Intelligence related or iPhone related, but now let's go to the first one, which has to do with camera control. So now that we know which iPhones are supported, the very first thing you're going to want to do once you install 18.1 is that there's going to be a wait list for Apple Intelligence. So go into your settings, go to where it says Apple Intelligence and Siri, and then this toggle, obviously for me it's turned on, but this one will be turned off by default. None of the menu options that you see here will be available, and it'll just ask you to join the wait list. Now when I joined the wait list, I did this obviously during the beta program, and within about five to 10 minutes, I was accepted into that wait list and I was able to use Apple Intelligence, but I do recommend doing that first so you are able to then jump in there and use all the Apple Intelligence features that we've been talking about. So definitely do that as a very first thing when you jump into 18.1 if you wanna be able to use Apple Intelligence. And also let me know in the comment down below, once you do do that, how long it actually took you to get accepted into the Apple Intelligence program, because I'm very curious to know. So the first one has to do with the iPhone 16 and 18.1, and this is actually not an Apple Intelligence feature, and it has to do with camera control like I mentioned. So first and foremost, when you pull up camera control and you pull up the actual application, but with 18.0, one of the things that was missing is that we weren't able to actually activate the selfie camera via camera control. And now you are able to with 18.1. So if you tap in here and then scroll up, you'll see the brand new version of it that shows that you actually can go into the selfie mode and use that true depth camera, which makes it a little bit more easy to access. And what's nice about this is that you can actually scroll your finger on here too. So you don't actually need to fully use a camera control button. You can just pull it up and go in between them. But now you're able to do that. So now this is where we're gonna start talking about Apple Intelligence features, and we're gonna jump into the Photos application. The first one we're gonna talk about is going to be that new cleanup feature, and this is gonna be a very welcome addition. The competitors on the Android side have had something like this for a little while now, so it's nice that it's gonna be natively supported on iOS. So the first thing you're gonna see is you're gonna access the edit and the cleanup function the same that you would edit any photo in previous years, but now you have a new option on that bottom right hand corner, which is the cleanup button. So you tap on that, you gotta give it a second to kind of render itself up, and then you're able to use your finger to then get rid of either people or objects in these images. So for instance, if I wanna remove myself from this image, all I have to do is circle this right here, and then it'll take a second, it'll give you that rainbow effect, and then voila, I'm completely gone. And as you can see, if I zoom in here, it did a great job of keeping everything kind of natural. You see maybe here, the little divot down here, which kind of gets in the way, but overall, I mean, it seems like I wasn't even there to begin with. So that is one thing that's coming with the cleanup feature, but there's a second thing that's coming with the cleanup feature, which not a lot of people are talking about, which is if I get out of here, let's go to a different image that kind of has my face on it. If we tap on this image, for instance, right here, we go into the edit function again, we click on the cleanup feature again, give it a second to do its thing, and now that it's ready to go, I'm gonna zoom in here, and let's say you're taking pictures with your family, and you wanna post these online, but maybe you have a little child or something that you don't wanna show their faces. So all you have to do here is actually circle somebody's face, give it a second, and then it's gonna give it the blur effect. So it's not really gonna get rid of the head because last thing you want is a headless body, of course. So this is gonna have actually so this is actually gonna face blur that person and it's gonna keep it that way, which I think is a great feature that again, isn't talked about enough with this new cleanup functionality that's coming to iOS 18.1. Now this next feature has to do with AirPods Pro Gen 2 specifically. It can be the Lightning version or the USB-C version, but it has to be the Gen 2 version. And as you guys saw during Apple's keynote when they were presenting all the Apple intelligence stuff, they talked about Apple using these AirPods Pro as a medical grade hearing aid for low to moderate type of hearing loss. And what's nice about this is that this is now available with 18.1 with anybody that has this pair of AirPods Pro. So the way to access this, and I'm gonna leave Jeff's video down below because he does a complete walkthrough on how to do it, what the experience is like, so definitely check that one out. But to give you guys an idea, just go into your settings, 
make sure your headphones are connected and on. And then of course you're gonna have your USB-C settings that pop up in your settings menu. Scroll down to where it says take a hearing test and then go through that prompt. And basically it takes about five minutes. I already did it one time and it gave me the information that I needed to know, which is that I'm pretty much okay. It's like low to no hearing loss, which I did take a screenshot. So you can see here that it goes on the left and right ear. And the way that it does this, and it's very similar to how you would do a hearing test at a doctor's office where you go in, they give you the headphones, you kind of hear right and left sound that are louder or softer, different frequencies, different pitches. And it basically does that for about five minutes in total. And then it gives you your results. So you can see with my results that I'm not really balanced, but it says that I have little to no hearing loss on both of my ears, which is something that I do think is a good thing, obviously. And then one of the most useful features with 18.1 and Apple intelligence has to be the notification summary. So if you are somebody that is in a ton of different group chats and maybe they you get a bunch of notifications, all notifications from the same application, now we're gonna get Apple intelligence summarized preview. So if you go down to your notifications, and you scroll down here, for instance, let's take Bleacher Report. You can see that you have the Bleacher Report logo. It has a 22 on it, meaning that it's summarizing 22 different notifications from Bleacher Report. And it gives you an idea of what these things are gonna be telling you. So you can see here, first father-son duo of the NBA, King sharing words of wisdom, first look at Mahomes, new wide receiver. And then you open this up to expand it, and then you see what the actual notification is gonna be. So you can see D-Hop, which is that wide receiver that was by Mahomes. So depending on how many notifications you have and how many things you go through, it could be very useful. It could be not enough information depending on what's going on. Like I mentioned, I'm in a group chat with about 30 different people in an online dynasty for a video game and hundreds of messages come in there every single day. So the summaries for that one, it might be even too broad, but you do get a general gist of what is being said in that group chat versus if you're just missing two or three notifications, it does a much better job of honing in on what the main message is on those notifications. So this next one is going to be native to the entire OS, and that's going to be writing tools. So anytime that you're able to edit text, no matter where it is, I'm going to use the notes here for my example, but you can actually highlight everything or actually get this little notification or news tool in your toolbar, which is going to be the writing tools. And this is available, like I mentioned, across the entire operating system, as long as you're able to actually modify and change the text. But you can see here that there's multiple ways to bring this up. So first and foremost, on the top of your keyboard, you now have the Apple Intelligence button, which allows you to then get your Apple Intelligence writing tools. So it'll proofread it for you, it'll rewrite it, it'll be able to change the tone of it to friendly, professional, concise. It can even summarize it, give you key points, pull it out in a bulleted list. So for instance here, if I wanna change this into a friendlier tone, it's gonna take all this verbiage, which is an article that I wrote earlier this week about the new Sonos Arc Ultra release, but it'll summarize everything for you and then give you an idea of what that's gonna look like, making it very easy to then kind of modify things as you see fit. And this will work across everything from something as simple as a huge paper or essay, or maybe just one or two sentences that you want to distill down into one or two words. And then lastly, of course, you're gonna get the whole new look Siri, which is gonna give you that nice rainbow glow animation that people have been touting or that Apple's already been marketing to everybody since it was originally announced at WWDC. And there's two ways to communicate with Siri by default. You don't need to access anything through accessibility in order for this to happen. First is gonna be the obvious one, which is actually saying it out loud. So if you do say it in response to you, then you can start to have the conversation. The second way to actually interact with Siri will be via the lock button. So if you hold the lock button down, It'll open it up and it'll start to actually glow like that and then you know start to ask questions for it or whatever the case is and then lastly you can actually text to siri by default so if you double tap on that home bar on the bottom it will actually pull up the keyboard so then you can actually type to siri and say hello how are you send it through see what it responds back and it says hey i feel good thanks for asking but then you can see as you're typing, so if I'm typing out WH, it'll start to pre-populate some prompts that you might wanna ask Siri to begin with, like what's on my schedule, what's the weather? You can just tap on what's the weather, send it through, and then it'll tell you exactly what the weather is. So, But those are all the different features that I wanted to highlight with iOS and iPadOS and macOS 18.1 and 15.1 respectively. This is the Apple Intelligence update, so if you do not have Apple Intelligence, unfortunately a lot of these features will not be available for you depending on which iPhone or which Apple product you have. But I just wanted to highlight some of the main ones, but definitely get subscribed because we're gonna have complete walkthroughs and to give you a little bit more nuanced detail on all these Apple Intelligence features, how to use them, and then especially what's missing and then what's coming later with 18.2, which is gonna be the more fun stuff like the Genmojis and the Image Playgrounds and all that good stuff. But that'll do it for this video, everybody. Let me know with a comment down below if you're updated to 18.1, which iPhone you have, which iPad you have, and how you're gonna be using Apple Intelligence, if at all. But that'll do it. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you wanna watch more videos like this one, definitely check out one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.